Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem power of four. We finally don't have a hard problem today, but we're given an integer n. We want to return true if it's a power of four, otherwise we return false. What is a power of four? Well, basically we have four and some variable x where x could be any integer value and not just zero, one, two. And you might think theoretically X could also be a negative integer. It could be negative one, it could be negative two. Well, if you remember what negative exponents do, suppose we had something like four to the negative one, that would end up being one divided by four. And that would kind of make this problem hard if we had to deal with negative exponents. But notice how the equation is set up such that n is equal to this power of four. And they specifically tell us n is an integer. So therefore we can actually rule out negative exponents. This will never be the case. We're only dealing with positive exponents. And to quickly review how positive exponents work, we have four to the power of zero. That's kind of like the base case. That's gonna be one no matter what. We could have any number raised to the power of zero. It's always gonna be one. We could have four to the power of one. That's gonna be four. Four to the power of two. That's gonna be four times four. And we just kind of keep going like that. So the most obvious way to solve this problem is doing some kind of looping or even recursion. We start with the n value and we basically, like if we start with something like this, we keep dividing it by four until we eventually end up reaching the base case one. Now, what if it's possible that the number can't be divisible by four? Like suppose we started with 40. We divide that by four, we get 10. We have 10, we divide that by four. Now we have uh, not an integer remaining, right? This doesn't really work, we get 2.5. At this point, we would detect that this is not a power of four. The other case that we can detect if it's not a power of four is, of course, if the number itself n is negative and that might not be intuitive at first but yes n can be negative and how can we possibly have four raised to some power and how can we possibly end up with a negative number like that it's not really possible so anytime we have a negative number we return false anytime we even have a zero we return false if n is equal to zero how are we ever going to get that we can't no matter what x is we can't get that zero so we return false in that case so let me code up the recursive solution for this problem so like I mentioned, the main base case we're gonna deal with is n is equal to one. That's the only case where we return true because either n is given to us as a one or we're gonna keep dividing it until it ends up being one. So that's the main base case here. And the other thing we're gonna do, the recursive case is where we're going to just call self dot is power of four and pass an n divided by four. And we're doing integer division here, and we're gonna return the result of that. So that's the recursive case. Now there's the other case where we actually have to return false. And the easy part is if n is less than or equal to zero. In that case, of course, we're gonna return false. But there's a specific reason that I'm putting this case after the one up above. And that's because there's another case that we kind of talked about where we're gonna return false. If n is not divisible by four, we have to return false. So I put that here as well. Or n is divisible by four, we return false in that case. And the reason I'm putting this before putting it uh, up above, if I do it here, well, when we get to n equals one, that's definitely not divisible by four. So we're gonna end up prematurely returning false in that case, even though we wouldn't want to. So that's why I'm putting it down here. And I'm also checking this before we pass n divided by four as a, a parameter to the recursive call. We have to make sure that it's actually divisible by four before we try this. So this is the code. Let's run it to make sure that it works. As you can see on the left, yes it does, and it's pretty efficient. This is a big O of n time solution, also a big O of n space solution, which we probably could improve if we used a loop, but there's an even more optimal solution that I'm gonna show you now. So this is just a bit of math. We know n is equal to four to the power of x. Anytime you're dealing with exponents, logarithms are kind of like by definition how you deal with that. 
So if we take the log of the left side and we're doing this to basically get this exponent to come down here. So, so by uh, taking the log of this, we end up taking this exponent and bringing it down here. So to rewrite this now, we have log n is equal to x times log 4. Now with logs, you can choose what base you want to do. We can specifically choose to do log base 4 of n because that's going to be very convenient for us. That's going to allow us to get rid of this term. Log base 4 of 4 is going to be 1 because what logs are doing is it's basically asking like log base 4 of 4 is basically saying what exponent do we need to raise 4 to such that it's equal to 4. And of course, that exponent is always going to be 1. So that's like the definition of log. So if we do this intelligently, we are now able to solve for x. Remember, that's what we're trying to do in the first place. We're trying to figure out if x is an integer. So if we're able to solve for x, we can determine if it's an integer or not. And this math formula is basically going to allow us to do that. Take log base 4 of n and then check if that's equal to an integer. So knowing that, let's code this up. So I'm just going to leave the original code here uh, because why not? And now I'm going to, in Python at least, this is how you can do it. You can take log of n and you can provide the base as the second parameter for. And for us to know if this is an integer or not, the way I'm going to do it is just modding this by 1. If this is equal to 0, then it's an integer. And then we return true because we determined x is an integer. And if we don't, we end up returning false. Uh, but the other case is that if n is negative, so we can add a if statement up above. If n is less than or equal to 0, return false. But we can also uh, include that here in this conditional. We can say if n is greater than 0 and this is the case, then return true. So let's run this to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. Technically, with logarithms, there actually is some computation going on underneath the hood. It's not necessarily a constant time solution, but I think practically speaking, it is. And of course, this isn't taking any like extra space or anything like that. So if you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.